Congregational Church. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is a season of spiritual disciplines, prayer, reflection, sacrifice, and service. During the next 40 days, we will journey with Jesus towards his walk towards Calvary. And of course, we will conclude with a joyful, res joyful Easter Resurrection Sunday. Today, our entire worship service will be experiential. We will experience five stations representing a day in the life of Jesus. We will begin with prayer, as Jesus did. Then we will move to heal the sick, feed the hungry, help the poor, share the good news of the gospel, and bless one another. As always, our worship team hopes to provide you with a worship experience that is epic. Epic stands for experiential, participatory, image-rich, and connected. A note about our worship music. Our worship team attempts to provide a wide variety of music, from traditional to contemporary and everything in between. We encourage you to make special requests and dedicate a favorite song to a loved one if you wish. Today we will have traditional music from our hymnals and old songs that bring us joy, that remind us of the life and the ministry and the sacrifice of Jesus. Everyone is welcome to participate in worship at whatever level is comfortable for you. Whether you read a prayer or a scripture, clap your hands, sing out loud, or sit quietly in your seats or at home on Zoom, may you feel God's presence today as we work, join together in worship. A note, about our, a note for our Zoom members. You are equally welcome and encouraged to participate in worship at whatever level is comfortable for you. Note that you can use your chat function to say amen or put a reaction button, use your reaction button to give a heart or a thumbs up during worship. And likewise, you can unmute yourselves to share your joys and concerns. And always, you are welcome to read scripture, sing a song, record joys and concerns, and offer your gifts as part of worship service. For a copy of today's order of worship, you can, or to view us on our YouTube videos, you can uh, go to our home webpage, www.rccucc.com. And they remind to you that here, in this local congregation of the United Church of Christ, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Now let us begin our service with our musical prayer. I have decided to follow Jesus. We got church school.
We gather today to embark on our lengthy journey. But the road is long, and the journey is hard. But God is with us, and Jesus shows the way. Blessed are those who follow Jesus. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are those who pray to the Lord. Blessed are those who give to others. We gather today to give praise to our Lord and then model Jesus in our lives. Amen. You may be seated. And we will begin our service with the first station to begin the day with prayer. Our scripture is Mark 1.35. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of town to a lonely place where he prayed. Please come to the lectern 
and uh, share with us so they can be recorded, so that we can read uh, them in the bulletin on the, during the course of the week and keep one another in prayer. This one hits close to home. My best friend of 52 years, Francois Draper, went to home Park Valley, uh, has been having trouble catching her breath and she'll have a CT on Monday to try to figure out why. So I ask for prayers for Francois. Amen. Amen. And this one is not close to home. I guess I would pray for the people of Palestine, Ohio, and that we, we all pray that we can take better care of, of the earth and the environment and not let tragedies like this happen. And also, of course, continue praying for the people of the earth. Amen. 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 As I do every week, I ask for prayers for Nora and Joe, my daughter and son-in-law. And last week, most specifically for Joe, who was dealing with COVID. Um, but in an, in an odd kind of way, that, had, that has brought some special joys. Um, instead of spending a week with me, they spent two weeks with me. His need for me helped me to be a part of their lives, and I got to spend hours and hours watching television with my daughter. <laughs> so it's odd that sometimes the things that seem like, and by the way, great joy, she and I seem to be healthy. We seem to have escaped. And in the case, especially with regard to her, we're very concerned. Amen. Amen. And grace and love. Yes, once again, I wish to say a prayer of thank you, especially to Gail, the sweet wife, and to the congregation for continuing prayers for the cancer tumors that I have. I would like to lift up uh, Big Jim, who can only be with us every other week and really misses being in worship every Sunday. And he can't get on Zoom because he is literally out in the field with the horses at this moment. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, Brando is not with us today, but he has been attending Bible study on Tuesday night faithfully. And um, his visa has been delayed. Uh, so he was due back in February, and now it looks like maybe the end of April or May. Uh, and he, too, is uh, very faithful to our congregation and wants to be a part and give his gifts. And, uh, and let us keep him in prayer as he's currently sort of stuck in Columbia until we can get back here. And John Paul is on from work today. And um, I'm grateful that Doug uh, is early in the morning on the West Coast and he can find the time to get on. I think it's about 7.30 in the morning your time. And we're grateful for you. And I am also grateful for all of your Jackie and Florida and Barb and Hackensack that who are faithful in attending worship service. And now we'll, we'll segue into our Zoom family. If, are there any joys to share or concerns that we can pray for this week? Or? Um, I ask for prayers for my friend Mary, who had cancer and was transferred from the hospital to care when it belonged to this week. Are you able to hear? Yes. Can you her friend Mary, who was yes. transferred? Well, well. Any other? Any other joys or concerns on Zoom? Okay. I invite you to breathe deeply, open your hearts wide to the Spirit of God, and uh, as we sit in silent prayer and meditation, and when you are done, please say amen out loud so that we can say the Lord's Prayer together.
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us out into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our second station is healing of the sick. The scripture is Matthew 4, 23. Jesus went all over Galilee, teaching in synagogues, preaching the good news about the kingdom, and healing people who had all kinds of diseases.
encourage you to bless yourself. You can do that. Remember the fragrant oils of ancient times that we continue to use today. And I offer a blessing to each of you virtually. And may you smell the sweet fragrance. Amen.
Matthew 5, verses 1 up to 1. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill, where he sat down. His disciples gathered around him and he began to teach them. Jesus spoke many parables, and he also gave many lessons on how to live in the here and now. I will read you just a few excerpts from his teachings. Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt fails to lose its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built upon a hill cannot be hid. People do not light lamps and put it under a bushel basket. Rather, they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to the entire house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. He went on to preach about loving your enemies. You have heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Do you even have, even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. <clears throat> Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have received your reward. So whenever you give alms, as we gave today, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Concerning prayer. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in synagogues and on street corners so they can be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not keep up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need, even before you ask. Then Jesus reassured his people. He says, do not worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or what, or what about your body, or what you will wear. Is, not, is life not more than food, and the body not more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air. They need to sow no wheat, nor gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you can add one single hour of your lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies in the field and how they grow. They neither spin nor toil. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass in the field, 
which is alive today and thrown into the oven tomorrow, he will not, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall I eat and what shall I drink or what shall I wear? For it is the Gentiles who see these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows what you need. Amen. But first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Yes, it is. Today's troubles are enough for today. And I have several more. Jesus spoke. He went to so many villages and fields and mountains and seashores all around the region. In Matthew 6, he speaks of judging others. Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For judgment that you will give will be the judgment you get. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you speak in your neighbor's, why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye and do not notice the log in your own eye? Yes, yes, yes. Or how you, how you can say to your neighbor, let me take that speck out of your eye while there's still a log in your eye. You hypocrites. First take the log out of your own eye. Then you can see clearly to help your neighbor take speck out of his mind. Ask, and you will receive. Ask, and it is given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And everyone who knocks the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, would give them a stone? Or if your child asks for a fish, would you give them a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those I often say, we have not because we ask not. And in Matthew 7, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who does the will of my Father will enter. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do the mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you who behave lawlessly. And lastly, hearers and doers. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts upon them will be like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat that house, but it did not fall because it was founded on a rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like the foolish man who built his house on sand. The wind fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat against the house and it fell. And it was a great fall. Now, when Jesus finished saying these words, the crowds were astonished at his teachings. Amen. 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 I'm going to invite Bernard to sing, Keep Me Every Day.
Everyone, please pray with me, because this is very, very sacred to me, and I hope you can feel the pressure of this wonderful song. Lord, I want to live
I bless you, I wish you all of God's grace and goodness in your life. And you may greet your neighbors and bless them. Peace, Dad. <laughs>
to send us on our, to bless us and send us on our Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. God, Creator, you come to us in Jesus. You show us how to be connected to you and each other in prayer, healing, compassion, peacemaking, loving, even for those who persecute us. Empower us with your spirit to live in Jesus' way. Bless us today and every day with faith. Faith in your presence in suffering and joy and in your promise of eternity with you. Amen. 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 And the choir will sing our close loop. Thank you, Carol. That was beautiful. Our close loop is hymn number 188, Give Me a Clean Heart.